thank you so much for agreeing to talk with us and take some time today. Thanks for the invitation. So you have announced you're not going to run for re-election. Why? Why are you leaving the Idaho You know, Senate? it's been a great run. It's been a great run, and it'll be 10 years as I leave. And one of the things I noticed when I first came to the legislature, that there were many folks that were of a certain age, and I'm trying to be as delicate, maybe my age is what <laughs> I should say, and I've never believed that it should be a lifelong uh, tenure. And as fast as our economy and our world is moving, I really be believe it's important that we have people that are really forward thinking, and I'm not diminishing my colleagues at all, but at the speed of change we're going, we need folks that are a little bit younger and a little bit more into what's happening in the world to be able to prepare our children, in particular from an education standpoint. Education's been one of my number one issues since being, joining the, the legislature, to understand what it takes to really be competitive in our new world. Do you know what your next big thing will be after you leave office? This is so funny. I started making lists, and I, I've got a lot of things I want to do. I want to make another CD, and I'd like to do some more. I already have a, a consultancy. I do organizational, organizational development design, and I've never quit that during the off-season. I do quite a bit of that, as well as cross-cultural training, and I'm going to do, do more of that in coaching. So this week, your Fair Chance Employment Bill came out of the Senate Committee with a unanimous vote of support after a really emotional hearing in which there was tons of support expressed for that bill and almost no opposition. Tell us about this proposal and where it's headed. Well, I thought that was a sign, too, that I don't push your luck. You did a good one. Let's get out of here. <laughs> um, it's a really important bill, I believe. And it came to me, the, the, how I came to support that bill was people in my community came to me and said, I have a child, a husband, a wife, or themselves that had been incarcerated, had paid their time, had done what they needed to do, pay their debt to society, and were really eager to get back in the world to contribute to their families, to be whole themselves and to their communities. And they were unable to get into a job, some of whom had great educations, great backgrounds, skill sets that we need, but couldn't get past that initial thing on the application that said, are you a felon? Do you check it off? And I, my, my question to myself was, we're so many different things. We have all kinds of dimensions to who we are. I'm a mother, I'm a black woman, I'm a, of a certain age, I'm all these things. I'm educated, I'm whatever. Well, if I have been a felon and have done what I have needed to do, am I going to be a felon my whole life? Am I going to be judged my whole life for a failure in one little piece? And I don't think that's appropriate. So anyway, I started looking for legislation, partnered with others, and found that it's, it's a practice that's going on across the United States to give folks a second chance. I mean, I come into you, I meet with you, I give you the information, I fill it out, but it doesn't have that box. You meet with me and you make judgments as a skilled professional about I'm, whether I have skill sets that you might need in your organization. Nothing about this bill says you have to hire me. Nothing about this bill says you can't check my background. You do what's best for your company, but you let me walk in the door and tell you the fullness of who I am. It's not stopped by a little check in a box. I was surprised to learn at this hearing that not only are there Idaho businesses already doing this, Absolutely. there are lots of big national companies already Absolutely. doing this. Absolutely. And President Trump signed a bill in December imposing this policy on federal hiring and federal contracting. This seems to be pretty mainstream. It is mainstream, and I had no idea until a couple of years ago when I started looking at it. And I was only, only more encouraged to keep going. There are wonderful people out there that can't get a break, and we'd like to give them a break, and we'd like to benefit our communities by doing so. Now, this comes at a time when, for several years, we've been talking about criminal justice reform in Idaho, and yet our prison population, once again, is swelling uncontrollably. We have far more inmates than we have beds. Absolutely. We're shipping them out of state. What should we be doing overall? Well, I think this is another contributor to the Fair Chance Employment. Folks are in jail or incarcerated for a period of time and they get out. And we found out that, first of all, some of them don't have driver's licenses or don't have phones or don't even know how to use cell phones, depending on how long they've been on. Can't get access to driver's licenses. But if none of that happens, how are you going to get a job? How are you going to get a housing? How are you going to take care of your fines? How are you going to pay your child support? All kinds of things are necessary. We have to look at, at stopping that revolving door. 
We have to aid folks when they come out of that environment to be successful so that they can contribute fully. I think that's the biggest thing we're missing on what we're doing with folks when they get released. We have to be prepared to take them into our communities and help them. I'm not saying to baby them, I'm not saying to coddle them, but to give them the tools they need, help them find the tools they need to succeed and stay out of jail. Now that very same day that you had that hearing that was so successful on yes. your bill, another one of your bills went down to defeat in the full Senate. This was the bill to require that Idaho women have access to a six month prescription for contraceptives rather than just one or three months. What Correct. happened? Uh, you know, it was really interesting. Toward the end, I was feeling pretty good about that. I said, I think we're in a good, good place. It had gone through the committee. And uh, one of the final comments that was made by one of the people that asked for me to bring it back as a six-month rather than a 12-month, as we had the year before, said that uh, one of the medications that was listed was an abortifacient. We had checked with all the medical people we know, and they were not abortifacients. And when you say anything that has abortion in it, it, it puts uh, fear in the hearts of a lot of people. What our bill talked about was uh, um, interrupting, avoiding pregnancy, not interrupting pregnancy, but avoiding pregnancy, not terminating pregnancy. And um, I'm hoping it'll come back again. I guess I was unclear on that concern because it seems like if there were an abortifacient, that would be a drug intended to create a one-time situation. One why would situation. anyone want a six-month prescription? And why would it be in that list of, of drugs? We, we, we combed them very carefully before I brought it for fear of that, but that, that comment on the floor uh, apparently changed some folks' minds that they were concerned about it. And I think um, uh, in an effort to be absolutely careful, they voted in opposition. Um, I think it, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a complete shutout, but there were some things that have to be done. And I'm more than willing to try to clarify that before I leave this, this uh, legislature. You have been successful thus far this session with your Too Great for Hate specialty license. Plate. So far, so Is this good. one going to make it? Now, as I understand it, this one has passed the Senate in the past, but not gotten a hearing in the House. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I can't remember if we, if we got it through the House or not. I guess, I mean, the Senate, I guess we did. Um, one of the things that I will say over all this, there are a lot of folks that aren't, aren't real prone to want to do license plates. And one of the reasons I brought this one was because of the Idaho Anne Frank um, Education Center. Uh, and I do believe we are too great to hate. And I think that that is a, is, a, is a message that we can all own. In my consultancy, I travel all over the United States, and I don't know what people are most surprised to hear when I introduce myself, that I'm from Boise, Idaho because I'm black, or because I'm Boise, from Boise, Idaho and I'm black, and aren't all those Aryans there? There's still this misconception that there's this bastion of folks that's uh, running out everybody that is of color or of different sexual orientation or background from Idaho. That's not true. I think that Idahoans, it doesn't matter what their political affiliation is, uh, are here in Idaho because we want to be, we've chosen to be, we find it the place for us, and we don't hate. But we need to get rid of that, that uh, image that we have out there, and I think that will help do that. And it also, the, the costs that will come from the plates, a portion of it will go to the Idaho and Frank, which is uh, dedicated to bringing people together, to el eradicating hate and uh, dissension. You are also an Idaho Democrat, and that in the legislature is a fairly small minority. What will it take for Idaho Democrats to be more successful statewide and in the legislature? Well, I'm praying for them first, but <laughs> <laughs> other than that, I would say, you know, uh, a lot of people in Idaho don't declare. And I think it must be very difficult when we are so uh, disproportionately Republican. People are very careful about claiming something. It's, it's difficult for some people to be in the minority. I don't care what the minority is, whether it's women in a, in a given environment or a work environment or anything. It, people want to belong. And so when there's the opportunity not to declare or whatever, sometimes we do that. I think we have a message that's good. I think we've demonstrated a willingness to collaborate and work together. I think people have to search their conscience, their values, and come along. Um, and I'm hoping they will. I'm hoping Thank we will. Thank you so much, Senator, for taking the time to talk with us today. Thank you.